I'm Jake Norton. I'm from uh, Evergreen, Colorado, and I'm here at Expo 2020 as an ambassador for the Mountain Partnership. And as a climber and photographer and mountain filmmaker for the past 30 years, uh, you know, climate's impact on the mountain areas of our world is of huge importance to me. Not because simply it's a playground for me, but the mountains are so critical to all of us. Everything that happens in the mountains flows downhill and impacts all of us. And the mountains are being hit hardest by climate change these days. So this is an incredibly important topic and incredibly important subject to me and to all of us on the wor in the world. So now more than ever, it's incredibly important that we reach out to the global community on behalf of mountains to talk about climate change and sustainable tourism and sustainability in general. And Expo 2020 is just the perfect platform for that discussion to, to reach out and to tell people and explain to people why mountains are important, why sustainability is so critical for all of us. It's such an honor to be here and advocate on behalf of sustainable and climate resilient mountain development at Expo 2020 Dubai. We're reaching for the stars. For all of us. And, and I think like most of us, you know, my, my initial impressions of the mountains and still often when I go into them are are of these realms of omnipotence and enthralling omnipotence and impenetrability, almost invulnerability. You know, they rise up with these sweeping walls, sweeping faces, hanging glaciers, and, and they seem so powerful, so strong, and yet they're not. As we look a little bit closer, if we start digging deeper and scratching under the surface, we find that the mountains actually are quite vulnerable. I'm Stella Jean, I'm a fashion designer. I'm based in Italy. I come from a multicultural family. I'm half Asian and half Italian. I reflect this multiculturalism in my work. That's why we've met with the Mountain Partnership Program of the FAO in Rome and started this amazing trip through Kyrgyzstan. We've worked with these women, these incredible women in Kyrgyzstan, and we have transformed their resources, their natural, their cultural resources in fashion, in contemporary fashion. Uh, this work reached the cover of international magazines and international catwalk as the Milan Fashion Week. I found it very interesting and very good and very helpful because uh, there are so many partners, stakeholders, where and so many representatives and dignitaries from the mountain communities uh, we are able to identify many issue, uh, issues problems and their solutions and the best part is uh, we can share the experience and some successful uh, methods and ways that uh, different mountain communities are able to cope with the current climate change Uh, uh, in Gilgit Baltistan, we are working on many policies to help uh, mountain communities and find the sustainable uh, ways to protect the local resource. And one of it is uh, a resource planning and management that we have started and we have st uh, introduced the master planning for whole of the Gilgit Baltistan is urban and rural. And then under the leadership of Prime Minister, we have started uh, a 10 billion tsunami tree to counter the change of climate uh, climate change so that we will be able to stop the increase in the temperature so i'm really excited about being here in dubai at this expo to try to get our message out about how climate change may impact these mountain communities um, how they how vulnerable people, women and children in particular, are affected by climate change in these mountain communities. I think this is a very good platform uh, for a voice that can go not only to 
other people working in this area, but also to the politicians, to the policymakers that really need to be out there <laughs> delivering the message. Starting at school-aged children and working up, we need to talk about how this concept of frequency and probability, and those are very different concepts, actually, um, how they apply to natural hazards, and then how those natural hazards can, depending on where they exist, can create disasters. So, this is a very, very challenging uh, issue that I've grappled with for a long time. I think we've had some minor successes with it, but it's something. And then you add on to this a changing climate, yes. which is changing in different ways in different places. Yes. And that adds another complete complexity to it. Yes. And then on top of that is the other thing with changing land use, which right. often gets it often gets combined with changing climate, and it's different. Mm -hmm. It's very different. So okay. segregating all these things is important. Because long-term planning doesn't just have effects today, but it has a multi-generational spillover. So if we fund fragmented projects, we get fragmented results. If we have long-term planning, we get long-term results. And that's what we really discussed, and why it's so important also in the face of climate change. So in terms of ensuring the community's voice, that communities are engaged in the process, that their knowledge is integrated into the process, that their vision for what's to come is ensured. And at the same time, really engaging and partnering closely with governments and doing policy change, because that really has systemic change in terms of where we want to go. And then thirdly, having data-driven decision-making and using satellite imagery, using geographic information systems to really understand land use planning and also forecasting. So if we have those three elements uh, in terms of data-driven decision-making and government and community, that's where we get things right. I happen to adore Himachal Pradesh. I, I went there many times and then seeing how it changed over time and obviously the gorgeous areas uh, in northern Pakistan as well, if you don't control in terms of um, you know, building capacity, then you have uncontrolled growth and housing that doesn't suit the environment. Um, so it's really about sustainable planning and it's also about policy change. So